for Calgary Mendipur. Mr. Speaker, this NDP Liberal government is not worth the cost of housing. A Conservative government will axe the federal GST on new homes sold. On an $800,000 home, this is a saving of $40,000. The CEO of Home West End Builders Association said that this is the most significant housing policy in two decades. This means more young people will get to buy a home. Will the Liberal NDP government axe the federal GST on housing sales so more young people can finally purchase a home. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Unfortunately, with these Conservatives, the proof is always in the pudding and the details are in the fine print. It really comes down to what they're going to cut in order to pay for that GST cut. And in this case, it's the Housing Accelerator Fund, which dozens of Conservative MPs have actually written to our Minister of Housing pleading with him for money for their towns and cities. So, Mr. Speaker, I pose the question back to the member. Do they really care about a Housing Accelerator Fund? Do there dozen members who have written to our Minister of Housing want the, the, the Housing Accelerator Fund for their towns and cities? Because it's not just up for renewal, Mr. Speaker. There's another round coming. The Honourable Member for Calgary Mindeport. Well, what Conservatives will do is end the failed Liberal housing programs that have led to the doubling of rents, mortgages and down payments. The President of the Residential Construction uh, Council of Ontario said, We commend the Leader of the Official Opposition for putting forward this program, and we hope that the provinces will do the same. The founder of the Canadian Alliance to End Homelessness said, This is smart. So will the Prime Minister make the same commitment to help young Canadians who so desperately want to purchase a home and commit to axing the federal GST on new home sales. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, Minister of Environment and Climate Change. Well, I'm glad the Conservative member confirmed that their plan is to cancel the Housing Accelerator Fund, and I wonder how that makes the dozen or so Conservative members who have been pleading with our Housing Minister for the funding for their towns and cities feel, Mr. Speaker. But speaking of feelings, we saw how the Conservatives feel about people who are underhoused and unhoused yesterday at committee, Mr. Speaker. The member from Peterborough, Kawartha, in a really disgusting display of how she feels about people who are homeless, underhoused, and unhoused, she said that they're the reasons uh, that we have poverty in Canada. I said that that's the reason why we have crime in Canada, Mr. Speaker. Stigmatizing people who are underhoused, Mr. Speaker, that's not compassionate. The Honourable Member for Calgary Mindapur. Well, I will tell you what is disgusting, Mr. Speaker. Carbon tax Carney, conflict of interest Carney, is moving his headquarters out of Canada. This is the individual, Mr. Speaker, that is using his position as an advisor to lobby government. He is pocketing his profits as a member of the board of Stripe, and he is reaping the benefits of amortization rules through his role at Brookfield. So I'll tell you what's disgusting, Mr. Speaker. Why is this prime minister exempting conflict of interest Carney, carbon tax Carney, from conflict of interest laws. That's disgusting, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Minister of Health. Well, what you see, Mr. Speaker, is as soon as somebody doesn't support what the Conservatives do, they're slandered and attacked, uh, and incendiary language is used about an individual in this instance who's served his country in so many different capacities, both as governor of the Bank of Canada, who is also governor of the Bank of England, is recognized internationally as making incredible contributions to the world and its thinking about finance. And what we get from the party opposite is ad hominem attacks, personal insults, all because they don't share their opinion. That's concerning, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Belge Sassas ishmael Mr. Speaker, Halloween is over now. It's time for this liberal bloc to take off its costume and its rose-tinted glasses. Every month in Quebec, there are nearly 3 million requests for food, uh, for food assistance, which is 13% more than last year. Families are suffering under the weight of these liberal bloc taxes. When will this government finally recognize that it's failed and let Canadians have an election? Minister of Innovation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This week we heard something truly scary from the leader of the Conservatives. He said he will cut two programs and more beyond that. There is no doubt in my mind that Conservative cuts would hurt families. If you're one of the 400,000 kids across Canada that is able to get a healthy meal at school, 
so you can focus on learning. Conservatives will take that away. Literally take food out of the mouths of hungry kids. That's truly frightening. Now, how is cutting a national school food program going to help families pay their grocery bills? Good question. The Honourable Member for Belshazzar Dishmalévi. Well, here's the facts. This government claims that it has, it has invested $62 million to help do something about food insecurity. But meanwhile, community organization Moisson Sagny Lac Saint Jean has not received any of that money. This situation has been created by this liberal bloc government. Why does this government prefer feeding Ottawa's bureaucracy instead of families in Quebec and Canada? Secretary, the Secretary Parlementaire. Merci. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Feeding our kids is a priority in Quebec and Canada. The Conservatives and the Bloc Québécois voted against a great plan to help our kids at school. I would invite our colleagues across the way to look teachers in the face and tell them that we don't need to feed our kids when they're trying to go to school. The Honourable Member for the, the Honourable Member for Kelowna Lake Country. After nine years of these NDP Liberals, they are not worth the cost of housing. As just reported by Scotiabank, young Canadians are abandoning the dream of ever owning a home. Over half said they must delay home buying plans due to the current economic situation, and more are living with parents or family than just three years ago. Conservatives will axe the federal sales tax on new homes sold. On an $800,000 house, this is a savings of $40,000 or $2,200 a year in mortgage payments. Will the NDP Liberals ask the federal GST on housing so more young Canadians can finally buy a home? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, the Minister of Environment and Climate Change. Once again, Mr. Speaker, the details are really important, and this week the leader of the Conservative Party admitted that he was going to pay for that tax cut by axing the national uh, housing Accelerator Fund and other important programs which are supporting Canadians. And in response to that, Saskatoon's mayor said that a recent pledge from the federal Conservative Party leader to cancel the National Housing Accelerator Fund would put hundreds of already approved housing units in peril. This is true affordable housing, Mr. Speaker, not million dollar condos, as my colleague opposite was talking about. Affordable housing for people in need in Saskatoon are in peril with this Conservative leader's plan. The Honourable Member for Kelowna Lake Country. Well, Mr. Speaker, the Housing Minister himself said that that program doesn't actually lead to the construction of specific homes. Right. Conservatives will end failed Liberal housing programs that led to the doubling of rent, mortgages and down payment costs. The Canadian Real Estate Association said the Conservative plan to axe the sales tax on homes is, quote, a positive move forward, lowering building costs, increasing housing supply and making home ownership more attainable for Canadians, unquote. Will the NDP Liberals axe the GST, federal GST on housing, so more young Canadians can finally build a home or buy a home? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is a bait and switch in classic form. They say it's a cut. They're right. They're going to cut the housing accelerator fund. They're going to cut out the ability of thousands of tens of thousands of Canadians to access affordable housing. They're going to undercut their own MPs who want the housing accelerator fund to continue. This is absolutely mischaracterization of what they're trying to do. I don't know how any Canadians can take these guys seriously. The Honourable Member for Carrollton Prince George. After nine years, this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost of housing. He has single-handedly destroyed the dreams of Canadians who now believe that they will never be able to afford a home. But hope is on the horizon. Our common sense plan will axe the federal sales tax on new homes, saving Canadians up to $50,000. Will the Prime Minister axe the federal GST on housing so young Canadians can finally afford a home? Good question. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Innovation. So, Mr. Speaker, we're finally glad to, that the Conservative leader is, is being honest with Canadians. This week, he finally admitted that he will cut two programs and many more. One of those programs is a program that we fought on this side of the House for tooth and nail to get the Housing Accelerator Fund over the finish line. Why? Because municipalities for many years have been saying they need more capacity to speed up the process of home building. In Richmond Hill, Ontario, that's $31 million for 41,000 new homes. The mayor there, what does the member opposite say to the mayor, David West? 
The Honourable Member for Caribou Prince George. Mr. Speaker, I've seen the Honourable Colleague's polls. He should be more interested in dusting off his resume and updating his LinkedIn here, here. Uh, profile. Here, 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 here. Mr. Speaker, here, here. our Common Sense Conservative Plan will axe the GST on new homes, saving Canadians up to $50,000. Under the Prime Minister, the cost of housing has skyrocketed. His housing plan has only doubled the bureaucracy and red tape. It hasn't even built a single home. Will the Prime Minister axe the tax on housing so Canadians can finally afford to put a roof over their head? Here, here. Great question. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. We're catching a glimpse of what those members would do if they were ever fortunate enough to sit on this side of the House, Mr. Speaker. They would gut the programs that municipalities have been asking us to deliver to help them speed up the process of building more affordable homes for Canadians. That's truly appalling. Yep. What, would, what would the member opposite say to Mayor David West when he says it would be a shame to put that funding into jeopardy? How can the Conservatives stand up in this House and claim that they have a better solution to the affordable housing crisis than us? We have the most comprehensive plan in Canadian history. Yes. The Honourable Member for Megantic L'Erable. Mr. Speaker, after nine years of this Prime Minister, the cost of housing has skyrocketed. He broke the promise of the Canadian dream that if young people worked hard, they could get good paychecks, put food on the table, and buy a house to raise their families. But now today, according to Desjardins, young people need to wait 10 to 15 years more than their parents before they can buy a home. Will this Prime Minister, supported by the Bloc Québécois, will this Prime Minister accept our proposal to help young people by cutting the GST on new houses and condos? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of the Environment and Climate Change. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Affordable housing is a priority for our government. But the Conservative Party does not have a plan. What the Conservatives want to do, they want to cut tax on million dollar condos and then put in jeopardy truly affordable housing. We want to make sure that everybody can afford a home, whether they're buying a condo or renting in a cooperative or if they need to access shelter space, Mr. Speaker. Once again, the Conservatives are making it abundantly clear to Canadians who they are. They don't care about people who are struggling to pay their bills. They don't care about people who are renting their homes or living in cooperatives or shelter spaces. They just want to help the wealthy. <laughs> the Honourable Member. Mr. Speaker, after nine years, this Liberal bloc has doubled rents, mortgages and deposits. And now the Prime Minister wants to make the red tape even worse and increase costs even further. Meanwhile, the Conservative leader has proposed cutting the GST on affordable housing. In fact, all housing from zero to a million dollars, all of that housing would be GST free. Quebec's Property Owners Association believes that this is a good idea. Will the Prime Minister put an end to his photo op programs that don't actually lead to homes getting built? Will he do the right thing? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. We know that the Leader of Opposition doesn't know how to build affordable housing. When he was the Minister of Housing, he only built six affordable houses. They don't even know the definition of affordable homes. They don't know that people actually need a place to rent before they buy. They don't know that there are programs like Rent to Buy or Rent Geared to Income that actually exist, Mr. Speaker. Well, as our government, we've invested billions in new cooperative housing. And the other thing is, Mr. Speaker, Conservative Premiers across this province have not had a housing plan. The, the Conservative leader of Ontario, for example, has cut uh, funding for affordable housing, Mr. Speaker. Truly affordable housing aren't million-dollar condos.